Hello world and welcome. Today I will talk about uh, two really interesting model in machine learning, uh, which can be used for time series, data prediction or forecasting. Um, especially I'm comparing today Ishiboost and Arima. My name is Harris and let's get started. So if you like the content, uh, please hit the subscribe button or leave a like or comment there. The code is as well um, provided of these two uh, algorithms, which are going to be uh, compared. So afterward, you can also use the code. So first of all, I'm going to introduce the XGBoost, boost, which is um, a real important and interesting model. So I'm first of all importing all the data sets, and then I want to show you one um, picture that I found which is really interesting. So um, you can actually compare it um, like if evolutional wise that you can say, uh, first of all, there were decision trees based on certain uh, conditions. And then um, begging came, which uh, was combining the predictions for multiple decision trees. And then random forest was introduced, which is uh, similar to uh, begging, but only a subset of features are going to be randomly um, collected and um, for the decision tree. Then boosting was uh, proposed, which is a building model for uh, minimizing the error from previous models. And um, it's kind of really good performance and it's sequential, which means it's not parallel, it's sequential. Then um, gradient boost, uh, similar to boosting, uh, but you have the gradient descent to minimize the errors. And finally, we have the XG boost, so the um, optimized gradient boosting, so the extreme um, form of this, uh, which is doing parallelization and some tree pruning. So it's just a much more uh, optimized model, which is going to be used today. And I will just talk about it, how you can um, use it for anomaly detection, maybe in case of um, predictive uh, maintenance, predictive analytics, where you can, how you can do some predictions or how you can do some forecasts in time series data. So first of all, I'm loading some data. Um, this is some um, sensor data here. Then um, you can basically uh, see how it looks like. So we have some base um, sensor data here from uh, some current sensor. And then um, you can basically see the spikes, like the current is going up and down depending on the uh, device or the motor or some uh, system that you are connected to. And then now you want to get the same form, right, with the prediction. So I'm doing some uh, uh, data preparation, like um, um, train test split. Then I'm uh, putting all the information within the Ishiboost regressor because it's time series data. I have 500 estimators. And here you can, if you are plotting them, well, you can see there are a lot more hyperparameters which you can play around to have a better um, prediction. Uh, you can go into um, the deep. Um, and yeah, there are a lot of hyperparameters which you can use as well. And then afterwards, I'm predicting everything within the um, X test. And um, so the test data, which is unseen, I have a really nice um, root mean square arrow and max and mean square arrow, so it's really good performing. And uh, now, if I'm actually um, doing the prediction, uh, I can see that it's pretty good. Um, so it's actually, if you're going to this, you can see this the training test uh, data frame and test data frame. And you can see it's really good performing, especially peaks. It's very interesting for me. It's also getting the peaks, which is really fine. 
And then here you can save and load the model. And uh, while loading, you have the same schema. Now I'm looking for um, anomalies uh, like deviations from the Y predicting loading test set and test set. And then um, if there are some deviations, uh, they will be plotted and you can see the whole data set and then the train prediction, which looks actually really good. And then you can see here the dots, the black dots or black red dots are the anomalies, which we are fine. Due to the duration, you can see the duration was really high. And that's why we have such a um, anomaly. So it's actually really good. I really like this model. It's really accurate. And um, yeah, now we're coming to the ARIMA model and uh, which I'm going to use the same data set to find anomalies. So first of all, I'm importing all the um, packages. I'm loading the same data set and I'm checking how the current sensor looks like. And here it is. I'm do doing the same. So it's also expecting uh, not a data frame, but it's expecting some series. Um, so um, I'm splitting everything, then I'm um, using the REMA, um, which stands for Automatic um, Regressor Integrated Mean um, Average. So it's using the path to predict and as well as using the moving average. So it's pretty also a really nice and interesting model. That's why I wanted to compare both of them. Uh, the most th thing that you can actually do in hyperparameters is um, the order, to change the order, then you will see that the prediction looks always different. So this is a really nice hyperparameter which you can use. So if you sum, uh, uh, plot the model summary here, you have such um, information due to the uh, probation of um, pr the probability, the sigma 2, and um, yeah, some nice information about the model itself. And then you can do the predictive part here to uh, predict the data. And if you are seeing how it looks like the root mean square um, and um, mean square, it's much more higher if you compare it to the other. It was uh, 0 0.3. Here you can see 0 0.12. You have uh, 1.7, so it's not so accurate. Um, I didn't get it so super accurate like the Shibus, but it, it really depending on the orders and other hyperparameters. So let me know in the comment section what to think about it. Maybe you can um, improve it even better or what kind of model you prefer, of course. And if I'm plotting everything, you can see the prediction looks also pretty good. But if you compare now the prediction with here, with the XG boost, which is my favorite so far, and now you have the um, ARIMA um, algorithm, you can see there is some shift. It don't get the peaks like the XG boost. Um, and if you are saving and loading everything, you get um, you can also um, calculate the anomalies as well. And then if I'm showing you, I found also some anomalies here as well. Uh, but you see the deviation is much more higher. So I would prefer or the approach that I'm using right now, I would um, go for the XG boost actually. I really liked it because it's super easy to uh, use. It finds the proper anomalies, the prediction um, is really good. You can also do a forecasting. So for my case, it was the XG boost. But let me know what you think about these two models, which we on you will prefer or use in your case. And thanks for watching and see you soon.